How's it going guys? Chris here with another Battlefield 5 weapon guide for you today, and in this one we're going to be checking out the Breda M1935 PG, the only burst fire rifle to feature in the game which got added during Tides of War Chapter 4. So back in the early 1930s, an Italian mechanical manufacturing company called Breda, which was originally known for making railway machinery and locomotives, branched out to design and create machine guns to be used by the Italian army. In fact, a few of their products became standard issue weapons for the Italians before and throughout World War II, though one design wouldn't be quite as successful, despite essentially being the first of its kind. This was the Breda PG, a prototype rifle made in 1935, which was originally just a semi-auto weapon when it was sent off for trials by the Italian government. Costa Rica took interest in it and went on to purchase several hundred units, and it was these variants, chambered for the 7mm Mauser cartridge, which were actually given a very unique feature at the time, a 4 round burst option, unlike those native Italian models that could still only fire in semi-auto. Weapons with burst limiting mechanisms didn't really exist prior to this point, and it would have been designed to help conserve ammunition, while still allowing the gun to fire several shots out in quick succession. With all that said, it was still all very early technology, and the Breda PG rifles would have been really heavy and complicated designs, making them quite expensive to manufacture. The gun itself never really had a chance to show off its burst firing capabilities on a large scale, though you could say that it had some of the first qualities of a burst firing assault rifle type weapon, making it a very unique historical firearm. Moving over to Battlefield 5 now, not only is the Breda's fire mode unique, but so is its damage profile, as unlike pretty much all of the other assault rifles in the game, the Bread has actually got a very different set of stats. It's going to dish out the maximum damage of 30, which is the highest in the class, dealing 5 more damage than average, though this is going to start dropping off immediately as soon as your bullet leaves the barrel. Despite this sudden drop off though, it still gives the gun more power per shot than average over pretty much all ranges, as the damage is not only going to be higher than the others, but it's also going to stop dropping down from 50 meters, where it'll then deal 22 damage per hit. This basically allows the Breda to kill in 4 shots up to 30 meters, or a single burst if you land all shots successfully, though an extra 5th bullet will be needed to finish someone off beyond this point, where you'll usually need to fire multiple bursts to seal the deal. Despite the higher power output, because those bursts only fire at the rate of 539 RPM, this doesn't exactly give it great kill times up close, made even riskier here due to the half second delays in between those bursts, slowing kill times down drastically if your initial burst doesn't get the job done. These fire rate drawbacks can be slightly altered and improved with specialisations, which we'll talk about a bit more later on, but generally the Breda can sometimes be hindered by that burst fire mode, often making it slightly less suited for offensive tactics in CQC. Because the Breda does fire in bursts, this can at least help to make it easier to moderate its recoil, essentially limiting the amount of recoil the gun's going to gain per trigger pull, which could potentially become much higher and harder to control if it was to fire in full auto instead. With an upwards kick of 0.64, this isn't anything particularly high or awkward to control, though because it's got some irregular horizontal values with those 0.1 left and 0.275 rightwards figures, this is going to force your line of fire to generally drift upwards and to the right, with that direction having a much more prominent value. These recoil stats can make the gun less accurate than other rifles, with some shots in your burst slightly straying off target against players beyond medium range. Plus because the gun's recoil will often pull your line of fire away from said target, you'll usually need to compensate for this recoil after every burst, unless your target's a bit nearer by. Though probably one of Battlefield 5's best kept secrets is to take advantage of the Breda's select fire toggle, switching over to semi-auto when you need to take on players just outside of the gun's reach, which is going to give you a lot more accuracy over distance. And having the highest long range damage and muzzle velocity of all the assault rifles, along with lower kick than pretty much all the semi-auto rifles, this actually makes it a really viable gun to use with its semi-auto setting, giving you more precision at the expense of some speed. When it comes to reliability, the Breda PG isn't exactly a great role model, having quite a lot of stats that can often make the gun a fairly risky thing to use. It's got the lowest assault rifle magazine size of just 20 rounds, allowing you to fire off exactly 5 bursts when fully loaded, and because it can often take a few of those bursts to put a player down beyond close range, this can often make its burst fire less suited for taking on multiple targets one after the other, limiting its performance, thus forcing you to reload, often in the middle of a gunfight when you really don't want to be running out of bullets. 
ammo can be both preserved and wasted by that burst fire function, and sometimes you may only need a single bullet or two to finish someone off, not four. Though at the same time, it does limit you to five bursts per mag, at least making it feel quite consistent to use. Perhaps more so than a fully automatic weapon with a fire rate that can be harder to moderate. But the Breda's reload speeds really don't help to make things any better here, having the longest magazine swaps of all the Assault Class rifles. It'll take three seconds to reload a partially spent mag, though it'll take 3.6 seconds when you fire off the gun's last burst, and these times can't be sped up either, sometimes making it a pretty unreliable weapon up close, often one that's going to leave you in a few awkward spots when you get yourself surrounded. So, time for the specialisations. At the top, the bread has got access to the enhanced grips, tightening up hip fire spread, and it's also got access to quick aim, speeding up ADS time, which I generally find is the more useful option, as this gun's mainly going to excel beyond close range, and you'll probably find yourself aiming down those sights quite a lot. In the middle section, you'll find light and stock and light bolt on the left side, which is actually going to increase the fire rate of your bursts to 635 RPM, along with giving you faster movement speed while aiming down sights. Though the right path gives you the ported barrel and trigger drop specs, reducing the delay time significantly between those bursts, while also lowering horizontal recoil too. Both sides are going to slightly decrease your kill times and give you better overall precision for burst fire, though they're going to do it in slightly different ways. Trigger job will actually give you a slightly faster fire rate overall, despite it not directly impacting that stat, as it'll allow shots to flow at a steadier pace without having to put up with as much of a delay, which can be really handy in shorter range gunfights, especially when an extra burst is needed. So for that reason, I tend to opt for the right side, as it'll help to make the gun a bit deadlier and less risky to use over close to mid ranges, and its semi-auto function is good enough at dealing with players any further than this. And lastly, we've got custom stock and barrel bedding, both lower in spread when moving or standing still, and because you'll often be strafing around to line your sights up with other players, I tend to find custom stock to be the more useful choice here. So in conclusion, the Breda PG rifle is a really interesting gun for the Assault class with a lot of stats to benefit mid to long range use. It deals more damage than the others and can therefore put players down in less bullets, though the burst firing nature of the rifle can often be a blessing and a curse, limiting you to 4 round bursts while slowing down the overall fire rate. Although it can still compete up close with a lot of the fully automatic weapons in the game, it can often be best to play with a slightly more defensive mindset, down to it often being a much riskier gun to use with aggressive tactics in close quarters. And the gun's held back by its small mag size and lengthy reloads, further added to the risk in CQC. Plus that burst fire can sometimes be quite tricky to control, often leaving you vulnerable in gunfights if a single burst doesn't put the other player down, increasing the time to kill. Its uneven recoil pattern pulls your line of fire upwards and to the right, often making its burst less precise against players further away too, meaning that burst fire is only really going to be effective up to a certain range. With that said, flipping the select fire toggle to its semi-auto setting is going to give you a lot more accuracy, with the gun even rivaling a lot of the semi-auto rifles down to its high muzzle velocity and damage over range, and switching back and forth between these two fire modes on the go can give the gun a lot of usability in both shorter and longer sightlines making it a really versatile weapon, easily adapting to the situation you're in. So that's it for another one guys, hope you enjoyed the guide, thumbs up if you did, and subscribe for loads more right here on my channel. Take it easy, and I'll be seeing you in that next one.